Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, feints or fakes. Um, you know, we see them uh, used in some historical manuals. Uh, I've seen it used in Lignitzer. I spent some time studying Lignitzer's or so in Buckler Place. Um, and, you know, you know, even though that they, they mention fakes or feints in the historical manuals, they don't tell us exactly how to do it. So for that, I have to draw on, on my personal experience and on the experience of other people uh, over the years that I have been fighting with. So when it comes to feints, uh, what I have found is that you have to calibrate your feint uh, to your opponent, okay? Because different people are going to react to different things in a different way. Um, so before I even get to the sword and buckle stuff, let's just talk about, you know, simple rapier fencing, right? Because um, this is a cut and thrust sword, I can kind of use it for both. Okay, so let's say I'm holding the center line over here, we're doing single sword, okay? And what I want to do is I want to basically make a circle to one side, get you to move your blade, so then I can come back uh, and attack in the line that I was originally in. Okay, so uh, with with some people, right? If I wanna if I wanna get them to move, I need to make a very large circle so that they will see it. I may even have to make a large circle pause and then come back. Uh, now, a more experienced fighter, you know, will not have any problem dealing with that because they'll simply move the sword to block that large circle, and they'll they'll have enough time to get back to. You know where I am actually attacking them from. So with a more experienced fighter, what I will typically do is I will make a smaller circle. Okay, I'll make a smaller circle and then and then thrust through. Uh, now, um, you know you can you know. So that's an example of of, of, of feinting the thrust or where you, where you're actually going. Uh, but you can also feint um, the uh, you know the way you feint. For so for example, if I'm fighting somebody. Um, and I see, and I know that this person, or I figure out that this person, you know, will react to subtle, small, subtle motions, right? Um, you know, I may actually, as as we're we're doing some blade work, right? I may actually use big circles uh, to get them to think that those are the type of circles that I make. Um, and then at some point, you know, without warning, I'll make a small circle uh, to accomplish what you know what I want to accomplish. So the question becomes, how do I know what to do? Okay. Well, the only way to know, right, the only way to know how your opponent is going to react to different types of feints or different types of actions is to test them out. So from the edge of my range, okay, I will try different things. I'll try big circles, I'll try little circles, you know, you know, and, and that's how I learn how my opponent reacts. Because you know, it, Now, it may be somebody I've fought many times before and I know how they react, or maybe somebody I've never met before. So I have to figure out how they react. Okay. So let's get into some uh, sword and buckler stuff. With the sword and buckler, um, you, know, you know, what we often see is when people attack, they're going to attack on the strong side, right, uh, to that, that high left quadrant, okay? So they'll, they'll typically attack there. And uh, uh, it, it's kind of predictable. Um, you know, people have a whole um, system of fighting from there. So I, I like to be a little unpredictable when I fight. Um, so what I want to do is I want to basically, um, you know, fake an attack there and go somewhere else. Um, so think, you know, as many people who are experienced watching this know, the body is basically divided into four quadrants. And if you want to attack one quadrant, you know, you, you want, you need to misdirect somebody's defense to some other quadrant. Okay? So, um, without using the fake, let's say we're using an actual cut, right? So. I attack there, they block there, I then turn the sword over and I attack to the other side. Okay, so, so that's an actual cut, okay? I'm actually cutting one side, okay, and then I'm cutting to the other side. Um, and I know that most experienced fighters are going to meet my blade. Okay, when I attack here like that, they're going to meet my blade. Um, so, you know, and, and here's the thing, I know they're going to meet my blade. Um, I'm expending energy. My goal is to really attack the other side. So one of my options is not to actually invest that much in the cut. Uh, what I can do is I can, you know, I can I can make that cut all right, without making contact. Right, I can stop short and then come over to the other side. And I'm using the buckler as defense. So whereas here they would normally the the blades would meet. You know, I let the, I let him find my buckler. And then I'm cutting to the other side. Um, and this is where now we get into calibrating your fake to the uh, to the level of your opponent. 
because with some people, right, when I fight, um, you know, I have to actually bring the blade forward, like almost, almost halfway, right, or maybe even a little bit more, before I can turn it over to the other side. With, um, you know, now if you are fighting an experienced person, right, and you bl and you bring the blade that far out, right, and then you start turning it to the other side, an experienced person is going to see the fake, and what they're going to do is they'll they'll move the saw to one side. And then they'll quickly move it to the other side. So, so the fake is not going to accomplish a whole lot. So, against a more experienced fighter, my fake needs to be shorter. So, instead of bringing the sword all the way out, I'm just going to basically just bring the tip forward and then cut to the other side. Uh, because now, you know, that gives them less time to react. So, I'll bring the tip forward, cut to the other side. Um, and against some really experienced fighters, I don't actually need to move the blade at all. You know, I can just twist the shoulder, the shoulder uh, and then fake to the other side. Um, so so a, sh a shoulder twitch uh, will a lot of times get a reaction from somebody, you know, if you're in the right range. If you're in the range where you are a, a threat to them, um, you know, you don't want to do your fakes from a range where you're not a threat to them because then, um, you know, not only will they will it not be effective, but you're also giving away the type of fakes that you like to do. Okay, um, so if I'm going to use a fake, I want to be at a range um, where I can actually turn it into a cut if I want to. All right, um, you know, so if I do a, a that 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 twitch, right? I'll do that twitch, and then all of a sudden I go to the other side. Um, so you know, again, how do I know which one to to use? Uh, I'm going to test my opponent out. You know, from from the edge of my range, I'll throw some shots. I'll see how he blocks. I'll see how quickly he blocks. Um, and, and that will give me information as, as to what I can do. Um, now there's, I mean, I, and it could be any cuts. I'm just giving you an example here where I'm, I'm faking to one side, going to the other. You know, it could, it could just as well be a high-low, like where I go, I, I, I threaten high and then turn the sword low. You know, I mean, it, and low can be either to the leg, you know, or it can be to the, you know, to, to, the, to, the, to an elbow or anywhere near the hip, uh, but basically to a lower quadrant. Um, so again, how, how do I know which one to use? Well, I have to feel him out. I have to throw a couple of shots. Um, now, one of the other things is that um, you know, it kind of goes both ways. It's not just a question of faking your shots. You can also fake your blocks, okay? Um, so what happens is, let's say we're at the, at the edge of our range, um, and, and we're, we're kind of testing each other out, right? You know, the fight begins, you know, you know, we're both throwing shots just to kind of see, you know, how somebody reacts, you know, you know, I mean, you know, how does somebody react if you throw that shot? Do they, do, you know, do, do they step back? Do they charge in? You know, how do they block? Like if I throw a shot to this side here, do they meet me like this or do they meet me like this? I don't know, this is, you know, so, so these are the things that, I, that I'm looking for and that your opponent is looking for. So if, if somebody is throwing, let's say this shot like that, right? You know, my preferred uh, block, um, you know, might be might be to do this, right? Let's say if somebody's threat threatening me on that side. My preferred block might be this. Um, but if I know that they're at the edge of their range, what I want to do is, you know, perhaps I might want to show them something different, right? I know they're testing me out, so what I'll do is I'll do this, right? Right? I'll I'll I'll, I'll throw that block, okay? Um, and obviously, if I'm if I'm using this block. I'm doing it with the purpose of turning the sword over and attacking to the other side. So if I'm showing them that I'm blocking this, they're, they're expecting that from there, that is the most likely attack. They're obviously, they're not expecting a thrust. So uh, at the edge of my range, I can show them that. And then later on, as the fight progresses, if they throw that same shot on this side over here, instead of blocking like this, I can block like this and follow in with the thrust. Okay. Um, so that's an example of, of, of fainting your blocks. You know, you show them that you block one way when in fact you prefer to block some other way. Um, so, so it, you know, it goes both ways. A lot of times people will refer to this as training your opponent. You know, you're showing them certain things um, so that later on you can, you know, you can do something differently. Um, you know, and uh, a lot of times people describe um, fighting as a good way to win a fight is to you develop a certain pattern and then you break that pattern, okay? So a, a couple of things for you guys to think about. And again, the, the focus here is um, calibrating your feints to your opponent. Um, you know, 
you know, figuring out um, what they react to, you know, what it takes to get them to do certain things. Um, and then, you know, working from that with some people you need, you can, you have to do, um, you know, you, so with some people you have to do very obvious things because a lot of times with people, you know, I'll do something like this and they just won't re react to that. They're, it doesn't mean anything to them. That's not, that's not a threat to them. You know, I actually have to bring the tip out in order for them to feel threatened enough, you know, to block over and then I go to the other side. Okay. 